Welcome, lab assistant. We have important work for you. Mold on corn can produce toxins that make people sick. We need you to test for the presence of these toxins. Basic lab safety procedures. Before you start, there are basic safety procedures that need to be followed in all labs. Wash your hands before and after handling the materials. Wear gloves and safety glasses. Don't eat or drink in the lab. Be aware of dangling jewelry, loose clothing, or long hair that might get caught in equipment. Clean equipment after use to avoid the possibility of contaminating the next person who uses it. Always strictly follow the instructions. Aflatoxin, a toxin produced by a specific mold, glows under black light, also called UV light. We'll first look for obvious mold on the corn, then put it under a UV light to look for aflatoxin that we cannot otherwise see. Keep in mind that some harmless things also glow under UV light. How does mold get on the corn? In two ways, prior to harvest and post-harvest. Prior to harvest, aflatoxin can occur in crops in the field if conditions are right for the growth of the specific mold that produces aflatoxin. Aflatoxin can also be produced by mold growing on corn that is stored after harvest. It's important to dry stored corn so the moisture does not promote the growth of mold. Various foods, including some grains, nuts, fruits, spices, and animal products can contain aflatoxin. Not all molds produce harmful toxins. Farmers and food processors take very seriously the prevention and detection of various molds and potential harmful toxins on food products. This is called a presumptive test, meaning if we see something under UV light, we presume aflatoxin is there. But more testing is needed to make sure it's really aflatoxin and not something else. Start by spreading out the corn. Turn off the room lights. Turn on the black light. Notice those bright spots. This corn is a candidate for further testing. It could be aflatoxin produced by aspergillus mold. Let's run an additional test for aflatoxin. Why do we test for aflatoxin? Aflatoxin has received greater attention than any other mycotoxin because of the harm it causes to humans and animals. Many countries have attempted to limit exposure to aflatoxin by imposing regulatory limits on commodities intended for use as food and feed. Given their seemingly unavoidable occurrence in foods and feeds, the prevention and detoxification of these mycotoxins is one of the most challenging toxicology issues of present time. It could be aflatoxin produced by aspergillus mold. Measure out 10 grams of coarsely ground corn. Before you start measuring, take a look at the scale. It doesn't read zero. Why? Use the spoon to measure out 10 grams of corn. Too much. Take a bit out and put it back in the bag. Great. Let's set this container aside and move on to the next step. We'll use a special test strip to check for the toxin. For the test strip to work correctly, we need to get our corn in liquid form. Some tests use distilled water, alcohol, or other liquids to mix with solids. This test uses methanol. You will add 50 milliliters of methanol to the 10 gram corn sample you just measured. What is methanol? Methanol, CH3OH, is the simplest alcohol and is often used as a solvent in experiments. It's light, volatile, colorless, flammable, and toxic. This is a graduated cylinder. It measures liquids by the milliliter. Pour out 50 milliliters of methanol. Pour that methanol into the sample of corn. Add the methanol to the corn to extract the toxins. You've added the methanol and the lid is tightly sealed. Now, mix it up. Shake for 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds are up. You're done shaking. You need to let this corn mixture sit for five minutes. Set the timer. Press the start button. While this is soaking, prepare the sample test tubes by putting a diluent in the test tubes to dilute the corn mixture before testing it. What is a diluent? A diluent is a diluting agent specific to a given test. 
It makes a sample easier to work with by adding liquid volume. While this is soaking, prepare. This pipette has a disposable tip and an adjustable dial for setting the amount of liquid the pipette will capture. It measures in microliters, which is a very small unit. 1,000 microliters equals 1 milliliter. Always expel air from the pipette first, so you don't get bubbles in the sample. To expel the air, press down on the thumb trigger until you feel resistance. If you press the trigger until it completely stops, you've gone too far. Now put the tip of the pipette into the diluent container. Add one milliliter of diluent to the pipette. This will be used to dilute the sample so there's enough liquid to perform the test. Slowly release your thumb to draw in the liquid. Releasing quickly might draw in air bubbles instead of the full amount of liquid diluent needed to perform the test. Now, release the liquid diluent into the test tube. Great! Now that you've added the diluent to the test tube and the corn solution has rested for 5 minutes, add the corn to the sample. Once again, expel the air from the pipette by depressing the thumb trigger to get all the air out. Keep holding it down while you insert the pipette to collect your corn sample. Be careful to avoid the solids and only withdraw liquid. Good job! Now, slowly release your thumb to withdraw 50 microliters of liquid. Release the sample liquid into the same test tube as the diluent. You won't notice a change in the level of liquid because 50 microliters is a very small amount. Now that the sample and the diluent are together in the tube, press and release the trigger four times to mix the liquids. Here is the test strip. Put the test strip into the test tube. Remember, the arrow should point down into the sample. Listed on the other end of the strip is the toxin the strip will identify. Set the timer. You must wait exactly five minutes. Time is very important in tests like these. Add the test strip to the solution. Make sure the arrow press the start button. The arrow lets you know this end of the strip goes into the sample. If this middle bar is as dark as or darker than the bottom bar, your sample tests positive for toxins. If this middle bar is as dark as, this is the indicator strip. If it's visible, you've administered the test correctly. If not, you need to run the test again. If this middle bar is as dark as or darker than the bottom bar, your sample tests positive. This strip is the comparison strip. Compare it to the middle strip to learn whether your sample contains toxins. The arrow lets you know this end of the strip goes into the sample. Let's look at the results. You know you administered the test correctly since the indicator strip is visible. Because the middle strip was equally as dark as the bottom strip, the corn tested positive for aflatoxin. Congratulations! You completed the test for mold on corn. You helped keep mold toxins out of the food supply and prevented people and animals from getting sick. What happens to the corn if it is contaminated with aflatoxin? It has very limited uses since it is harmful to many animals and humans. In many instances, it may have to be destroyed.